Hello everyone and welcome back to the 1972 World Chess Championship match between uh, Robert James Fischer and Boris Vasiljevic Spassky. Now if you've been with us so far you know that uh, Fischer is uh, two points in the lead, the, the current score is uh, five and a half to three and a half and uh, Fischer again has the white pieces so it will be very interesting will he continue with his c4 ideas perhaps he will go d4 or perhaps he will return to his uh, original e4 ideas. Uh, now uh, we've already mentioned that uh, you know there was a, a lot of trouble with the cameras and with the recording uh, of the match and uh, when Fisher found out that game 8 was recorded without his knowledge he really went furious and he was already well the match was going pretty much in his favor he started winning uh, you know uh, he did want to try and open uh, negotiations again to the placement of the cameras uh, and such. Uh, but uh, when he heard that Game 8 was recorded without his knowledge, he really went furious and said no more recording. Uh, and uh, American uh, recording tele uh, television, one led by Mr. Chester Fox, uh, had no choice but uh, to return home. So no no more recording for this match. And uh, it will be it will mean some a uh, hundred thousand dollars less for the organizers of this match now it would be really terrible and uh, uh, a shame for for it to affect the actual price fund uh, but the Icelandic Chess Federation said that uh, they will um, you know what, whatever money they, they need they will um, uh, they will find the money as they were planning some sort of a, a fishing war they were planning on expanding their uh, territorial waters for uh, for 50 miles uh, so a lot more fish will be caught and a lot more money will be made and um, also it's uh, it's very interesting that uh, people said that um, fisher it's hard to say if fisher really cared about money who would do such a thing uh, if you really if you really wanted the money and uh, people started making jokes that fisher really didn't uh, even understand the difference between ten thousand dollars and a hundred thousand uh, dollars since uh, he, he really didn't spend all that much uh, but okay, uh, now that uh, all this was said and done, uh, also a very interesting uh, fact is that uh, uh, Fisher used to eat a lot of salty herrings uh, during the during the games, so he really uh, had to drink a lot of water. And he said that uh, Icelandic water was really the best. He said that uh, <laughs> the rest of the world had uh, this kind of water like 200 years ago, but uh, in Iceland, uh, you know, there was no pollution yet, and the water was excellent. Uh, but okay, uh, returning to the game, Fisher has the white pieces and he again uh, opens with e4 this time. So no more surprises for Spassky, now it's time to play normal chess. Uh, Spassky goes e5, we have knight to f3, knight to c6 and bishop to b5. And uh, interestingly, Spassky really didn't care uh, about uh, uh, any, any recordings or television rights or, or the $100,000 that will uh, be left out of the organizers because he had bigger problems to tackle. Uh, a6, uh, we have Morphe's defense to the Ruy Lopez, uh, bishop to a4, knight to f6, we have castles, bishop to e7, rook to e1, and now b5. Bishop to b3, and here uh, Fischer already played this position against Spassky in 1966 in the second Piatigorsky Cup uh, in Santa Monica. Uh, Spassky, uh, <coughs> Spassky castled here, and after c3, Spassky actually went for the martial attack. Uh, but... Um, uh, Martial attack was uh, thoroughly analyzed throughout the years, so he doesn't uh, go for, for that anymore. He has something else in mind, and I think Fischer knew well that Spassky would go for this, as uh, Spassky knew that, uh, Fischer knew that he was going to go for that. Uh, d6, we have c3, uh, castles, Fischer goes h3, and here comes uh, Spassky's favorite line, knight to b8. This is the Breyer line of the Rue Lopez. Uh, where uh, black wants to immediately fix his uh, pawn chain on the queen side and remaneuver this knight to further control the c5 square. Uh, and Fisher has a very interesting way of dealing with this. Uh, we have d4. Uh, okay, knight b to d7, and now comes knight b, uh, knight b to d7 and the knight b to d2. Uh, also in the tournament we already mentioned in the second Piatigorsky Cup in 1966 of Santa Monica, Fisher tried uh, knight to h4 against Lajos Portis, and it was a... Uh, uh, it was a nice move going for that f5 square, but uh, here knight b to d2 comes as an improvement. Uh, bishop to b7, Spassky simply develops the light square bishop. Bishop to c2, further uh, controlling d4 pawn. Uh, rook to e8, and now comes b4. This was Fischer's idea, uh, attacking the, the main idea of the Breyer line, uh, that c5 move. 
So here, bishop to f8 by Spassky. A very nice move. The rook now uh, is uh, very nicely placed on the e file. Uh, Gligoric also mentions that uh, upon sacrifice with a5, uh, with the idea that if b captures on a5, now you can per execute c5, uh, isn't all that great because of a4. And here, after rook captures, uh, rook to b1, uh, the, b the bishop on b7 is unguarded. Uh, and if you want to prevent white from creating a pass pawn with a captures on b5, then you have to play uh, captures here, captures here, and then push b4. But by doing this, okay, you do get a pass pawn yourself, uh, but you give white this excellent uh, outpost for his knight on c4. a5 is coming, and uh, it will be a very enjoyable position to play for white. Uh, so after b4, bishop to f8. Uh, and now comes a4 by Fischer. Uh, we have knight to b6 and now a5. Uh, in the 1970 tournament of peace in uh, Rovinia and Zagreb, Dragoljub Minic uh, tried a captures uh, on b5 against Tigran Petrosian, but after a captures on b5, there was no real way for white to to go for any advantage here. So instead, Fischer doesn't capture, he pushes a5, kicks the knight back. Uh, we have knight bd7, now the knight from uh, d7 is uh, very nicely uh, eyeing that c5 square. Uh, bishop to b2. And here, uh, before executing c5, Spassky wants to uh, further improve his position. So first he plays queen to b8. So now when all of these exchanges in the center happen, uh, the queen will be guarding the e5 pawn. Uh, rook to b1. An excellent move by Fischer. Uh, with rook to b1, uh, Fischer is... Uh, uh, very nicely defending his bishop on b2, which was undefended. Fischer knows that when everything uh, opens up, that the queen will capture on e5, and th that uh, the bishop must be guarded by the rook. Also, by this move, uh, Fischer is threatening the very unpleasant c4, uh, which would uh, uh, which would be uh, a very nice positional advantage for white. So it's very so it's not all that uh, easy for Spassky to deal with this. Uh, Spassky executes c5, nonetheless. Uh, and okay, we have b captures on c5, pawn captures on c5, and now pawn captures on e5. Fischer's idea is that now you have to capture on e5, because if you move the knight, let's say knight to h5, then you get knight to c4. And here, really, all hell breaks loose. Now, uh, if you capture, then your pawn structure on the queen side is completely busted, and queen captures on d7, simply winning back the piece. Uh, and if you defend the knight, then the idea is uh, not doing anything with the knight, but rather bishop to c1. Uh, the bishop is uh, can come uh, very nicely to e3, f4, g5 if needed. Uh, you still can't capture because your bishop is undefended on b7, and the white would simply have an excellent game here. Uh, so after d captures on e5, Spassky has to capture. We have knight captures on e5, uh, knight captures on e5, and now comes queen captures on e5. And here comes the idea, the rook guards the bishop, so Fischer is able to execute c4 now without Spassky being able to push b4, as first he has to react to this attack. Uh, queen to f4, uh, attacking the knight and uh, preparing to attack the knight a second time. So first, bishop captures on f6, uh, removing uh, the defend uh, the attacker against the e4 pawn, and with this move, uh, Fischer now threatens to win a pawn. And okay, queen captures, and now comes c captures on b5, simply grabbing a pawn. And now if pawn captures, so rook captures here, bishop to a6, rook simply moves back, uh, white is up a pawn, uh, and uh, with a very nice position at that. Uh, so instead, Spassky doesn't recapture, rather he plays rook, uh, but he plays rook e to d8. Uh, very interesting, uh, rook a to d8 is not all that great, although it seems like uh, you're bringing an undeveloped rook into the game uh, and preparing some queen to c3 double attack uh, against the knight and the da5 pawn. Uh, actually, after queen to c1 and queen to c3 uh, attacking here, white would have this beautiful bishop to a4 move. And now you open up uh, an attack against uh, the queen here. The threat is b captures on a6. And there is no way to capture the piece here. If you capture, 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 uh, then comes b captures on a6, opening up an attack against the bishop, against the, the rook. After rook moves, rook captures, captures, captures. And after rook b2, you simply protect it. And the two pass pawns on the queen side are easily winning. Uh, so Spassky sees this, uh, not rook a to d8, but rather rook e to d8. Very nicely done. Uh, queen to c1, Fischer has to get out of the pin. Queen to c3, attacking the knight and the a5 pawn, and now simply knight to f3. Uh, Spassky grabs the pawn on a5, and now Fischer doesn't wait, waste time with b captures on a6 and bishop captures on a6. Uh, rather, he plays a brilliant move, bishop to b3. 
Uh, bishop to b3 seems like it's uh, it's a move that uh, is actually going for the f7 pawn, but it's a move that's actually going for the undefended bishop on b7. Seems like this entire game revolves around Spassky's undefended bishop on b7, and but you'll see how Fischer does it. Uh, a captures on b5, so grabbing yet another pawn. Now Spassky is the one who's up a pawn. It's very interesting, in a World Chess Championship match, from being up a pawn you find a brilliant maneuver that gives up a pawn but gives you a, a a nice attack queen to f4 going for queen captures on f7 and now you see the idea c4 will be met with bishop captures on c4 pawn captures and your bishop is undefended on b7 threatening queen captures on f7 after f6 defending now e5 and uh, white breaks through through uh, so after queen to f4, you do have to prevent this. We have rook to d7, and now knight to e5. Comes with an attack on the rook and a triple attack against the f7 pawn. Uh, queen to c7, only move that uh, pins the knight. You cannot capture on f7 because the queen uh, is undefended on f4. Uh, and now comes uh, a brilliant move by Fischer. Uh, you can even... Uh, uh, you you know feel free to enjoy this position you know just stare at it and uh, but yeah you can even pause the video and try to find the best move for white here it's really a subtle move but but it really destroys black uh, so I'll give you a couple of seconds if you decide maybe you want to do it uh, so for those of you who were able to do it congratulations you are a true expert uh, of chess and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show uh, the rook is rook b to d1. Rook b to d1 simply introduces another attacker against this rook on d7. The problem is, if you capture the rook, uh, then you get bishop captures on f7, uh, and black is lost. Of course, you cannot capture because you lose the queen, and only then recapture the rook. Uh, and on the other hand, if you don't, if you play king to h8, then knight to g6 check. You have to capture because bishop is guarding the g8 square, queen to h4, this is checkmate. So, uh, you cannot capture the rook here. Here, Spassky played rook to e7, he has to get the rook out of the way, but also keep an eye on the f7 pawn, uh, and only now that the rook is controlling uh, the d file, uh, rook to d7 will be an idea, bishop captures on f7. Uh, beautiful, beautiful game by Fischer. Uh, again, you cannot move because knight g6 uh, captures and now queen to h4 will be checkmate. Uh, so rook captures on f7, you have to give up the exchange. We have queen captures on f7, queen captures, knight captures, and now you see the problem of the undefended bishop. If king captures, rook to d7 check, and uh, rook picks up the bishop. And although, okay, you do have uh, two pest pawns on the queen side, but uh, the two rooks advantage will be, uh, will be uh, too much to handle. Uh, so after knight to f7, we have bishop captures on e4 first, uh, and now rook captures on e4. Uh, it's very interesting, uh, some of you might uh, have an idea that knight to h6 is the way to go. If black will already capture the knight, then why not mess up his pawns on the king side? The problem is if you do this and only then capture, then white can, black can already start pushing with c4, and this will be a, a most valuable tempo. Uh, so instead, uh, not wasting time with knight to h6, rook captures immediately, and now it's black that has to waste time capturing a knight. Uh, king captures on f7, and now comes rook to d7 check. King to f6, and now rook to b7, guarding, uh, attacking this pawn, and now you cannot push c4, you will have to push b4 uh, to simply protect the pawn, and this will be uh, uh, much worse for black, as he will have to put his pawns on, a uh, on the dark squares, and he has a dark square bishop. Uh, rook to a1 check by Spassky, uh, we have king to h2, and now comes bishop to d6, developing the bishop with check, g3, uh, and now b4, defending the pawn that was attacked on b5. Uh, we have king to g2, getting the king into the game. h5 by Spassky, and now comes rook to b6, uh, attacking the bishop. Uh, rook to d1, defending the bishop, and now king to f3. Uh, and here Spassky has to make his 40th move and uh, he has to seal this move. The game will be adjourned after this move. Uh, a lot of people said that with the g5, uh, Fischer's uh, kingside majority would would have been less dangerous and perhaps Spassky would uh, have greater chances here. Uh, Spassky played king to f7 and th th there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with this move. I mean, it's just as, just as good as g5. Uh, king to e2, attacking the rook by Fischer after the game was uh, continued. Uh, rook to d5, and now f4. Uh, we have g6, and now g4. Pawn captures, pawn captures, and now g5 even. Spassky uh, wants to 
uh, get Fisher to push f5 and pre perhaps create some sort of a castle here uh, as he wants to use the e5 square with his bishop to perhaps create some sort of a blockade. Uh, but Fisher doesn't mind. f5, we have bishop to e5 and now comes rook to b5. A beautiful move by Fisher, uh, really taking adva advantage of, the, of you know, small inaccuracies uh, in Spassky's position. Uh, now the problem is the threat is rook captures on b4 as the rook on d5 is undefended. There is no way to defend against this. Uh, you can't uh, get the king in because the pawn is guarding d6 square. You cannot move the rook because the rook has to keep an eye on the bishop. So you're losing a pawn here regardless of what of what you do. Uh, we have king to f6 and now comes rook captures uh, here. Uh, bishop to d4 and now rook to b6. Check. King moves to e5 and now king to f3. Uh, here uh, we have rook to d8. Now comes uh, rook to b8, not allowing uh, uh, not allowing the uh, Spassky's rook to go for the a file. Sorry about that. Uh, of course, if you play something like uh, pawn captures here, then of course rook to e6 will be checkmate. I uh, forgot to mention this. Uh, very nice idea. Uh, but here, after rook to d8, uh, Fischer doesn't allow Spassky to use the a file for his rook. Uh, Spassky still tries it. Rook d7, rook b7, rook d6, rook b6. Uh, and now, again, after rook to d7, now comes rook to g6, going after the last g5 pawn that will now. Uh, now Fischer will be able to push his uh, two, two connected pass pawns. Uh, king d5, we have rook captures here, and now bishop to e5. Uh, we have f6. The bishop cannot capture because it's pinned. Uh, king moves and now uh, the bishop can capture, but now Fischer plays rook to b1. Uh, and it was in this position on move 56 that Boris Vasilyevich Spassky resigned the game. Uh, there is nothing really to do here. Rook to d1 is the threat. A rook is coming to f5. That will simply start pushing his pass pawn. Uh, and of course, if you capture, then simply again rook to d1. And you, will, you, you can even capture here and then uh, enjoy your rook and pawn against the bishop endgame. So yeah, after rook to b1, uh, Spassky resigned the game, and the result is now 6.5 to 3.5 in Fischer's favor, so Fischer increases his lead uh, by 3 points, and uh, now after after 10 games, it will be extremely hard for Spassky to make up for this 3-point uh, three, three point difference. Uh, but, you know, it's chess, anything can happen, so we'll definitely see how it goes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and I, I do hope you enjoyed the quote by, by Svetozar Gligoric, uh, also it. Uh, Kind of is the title of the video, uh, but yeah, definitely not the greatest July for Boris Pasky. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Sitaram Ir, Roberto Cozzi, uh, Philip Colby, Gus Kolias, and Gerhard uh, Winterstein for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon, uh, hopefully, with some more interesting content. Uh, thank you all, and I'll see you soon.